What's up YouTube? We are back with the Santa Cruz Heckler today. This is the 2022 version. Although they didn't really change it from 2021, it's more like uh, we ran out of bikes at the very start of 2021, so we just pushed it forward to 2022. But let's get into it because electric bikes are here to stay and they cause a lot of controversy, especially on this channel. Let's go. So the heckler here we have is the CC model. This is the R spec to it. So this comes with the highest end carbon frame that Santa Cruz makes, followed up with a nice power spec to match. Obviously, when you're spending upwards of 10 plus thousand dollars on a bike, you're gonna get a good setup either way. When you're looking at the frame alone, that one sets you back probably four or five thousand dollars just for the frame, nothing else included. And that is the quality of the CC it drops the weight of this electric bike all the way down to 46 pounds. The front fork on it is the pipe, which is nice and heavy duty, but still lightweight and playful enough that it's gonna be able to still be a trail bike. And that's the difference between the Heckler and the Bullet. The Heckler is the trail option, the trail king. This one is the mixed wheel size, which I am really liking. The 29 in the front, 27 and a half. And big benefits that is bringing that rear end together closer up so it makes it feel like a more agile bike. This benefit is noticed on the Bronson or any other mixed wheel size bike. But what's cool is the Heckler is an electric bike. So you have a lot more weight to it. So when you can bring that back end closer, you'll actually get noticeable benefits to it by making a much more agile bike. Bring that weight down with a high end carbon, bring that back end in, and you have a really fast, lively feeling bike, which doesn't even feel like an electric bike. And that's some of the cool features. Obviously, you've got a 12-speed drivetrain on there. Obviously, you've got a really nice dropper post on there. Four piston brakes. These are the code brakes, so they are the more downhill ready, enduro ready. And again, it's because you might have a lot of pace and speed and more weight behind this than you would a normal bike. You need those higher end brakes. So who's the Heckler for? The Heckler is for everyone. And although you might say, I don't need an e-bike now, they're actually really fun. They do serve a great purpose. If you wanted to do a 30K loop, but you only had a set amount of time, and your normal pacing said in that set amount of time, you can only physically do 20K, there's your answer, it's the e-bike. So it's not just for people who need the assistance, it's for people who wanna travel a little bit further. There's that 10K gap in between the area which is fun here and the area which is fun there, and now you can fill it with a bit more speed, a little more pace, and then still have a nice, lively feeling bike on either end. So you can just ride more in the same amount of time. There is more and more studies showing you will burn the exact same amount of calories on an e-bike as you would your regular bike, just the big difference is you'll go more distance, you'll go further. You might not burn out as easy, so on that climb which would have killed you for the rest of the day, you actually just make it up that climb and you're good to go for the rest of the ride. And then you'll enjoy it more, push harder for the rest of the ride instead of being dead the entire way through. So there's tons of benefits to e-bikes. What's the downside? Obviously the weight. This thing runs in at 46 pounds, which isn't too bad for an e-bike to be honest. And by too bad actually, it's very good. Some of the Trek higher end models, you know, where you're looking power fly kind of level and the rail kind of level, you're still hitting that 50 pound mark on a full suspension. So to get this all the way down there is a really nice little touch. Obviously the battery size is a little smaller with just that 500 watt hour or just a little bit less. You still get great range on it. For the average rider, you're not gonna run out of battery on a normal ride. Yes, you can push the limits of the battery and run it out, but you still get, get 30 to probably 90 kilometers of hard trail riding on it. The grips on it are the really nice Santa Cruz grips, which I enjoy. They just have that right softness to them, but nice grip to them. The Shimano system is the EP8, so it's the newest motor to it. It's very small, very compact, and with that, we're able to push it really far forward without it looking odd. The battery is built into the lower frame, and that's the Shimano battery as well. So it works together really, really well. Let's jump forward and we'll check out how to work this thing. So first up to power this thing up, you are just pushing this on button. You kind of have to hold it for a second. I do wish there was a power switch on the top. I don't know why they don't. You know, Trek has it on there with the Bosch systems 
Uh, many have them up there. Shimano is direct here. So once the power's on, you get this nice little screen here. It's very simple on the Shimano ones. It's not like many of the other uh, series of bikes where it's this bulky big screen. This is designed for mountain biking. You have a little option button here where you'll be able to go through and tell you how far your odometer is, your trip distance, and then your range. The range obviously is related to the, the controls on the right side, and that will change as you go up. So with the eco mode, you're at to 145 kilometers. In the trail mode, you're at 72 kilometers, and in boost, you're still at 50 kilometers. That does update based on how far you're going and not how far, that does update based on how aggressive you are and how aggressive the terrain is. So if you're going up a hill, you know, a pretty steep grade, you're not gonna get 145 k at it, but it updates relatively fast. So you'll be able to know very quickly at that pace, at that distance, at that effort, how far it's gonna last and it will edit. So the range will change based on what you're doing in effort and ups and downs and, and how much kind of power you're talking in. The way an electric bike works in the Shimano system is it will detect how hard you're pedaling and output a percentage. That percentage of power will go towards assisting you and this will change based on how hard you pedal with a progressive curve. So more assistance with more power. Each mode, eco, trail and boost is a different curve. These change to more power to pedal ratio. So essentially on turbo, you won't have to pedal too hard before you get the maximum amount of assistance of about 250%. And in eco, you'll actually have to pedal a little bit harder to start feeling that ramp up, plus its maximum assist level is lower all the way down to I think close to 50% kind of effort. This will still assist all the way around, which is really nice. And you're still gonna be able to like go further and go easier and you'll be always be able to upshift as you need as the, gets, as the hill gets more difficult and bring it back down. So that's really nice about it. The other cool thing that Shimano does is they have Bluetooth built in. So you're able to connect directly with the system on your phone. There's a quite nice app. You're able to change and make kind of custom curves based on what you want. The trail mode, essentially, it goes to eco and then quite an aggressive jump so that you are always in kind of the most economical mode until you really need that. So you get to that really difficult climb or difficult bit and until you're really putting the effort and really struggling, then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you need the power and it kicks it up to high gear. But in trail mode, you don't need that much extra assist, so it, it brings it all the way back down. So you're just gonna be able to do a lot more distance and a lot more riding. Although the e-bike might not be for you right now, they're growing fast, they're getting bigger everywhere. There is not too much damage that can be done to trails with these things because they are class one. So that means that they only max out at 32K an hour here in Canada, a little bit faster in the States, but there's no throttle. It's all based on how hard you can pedal. So if you're struggling up a hill and you lose your balance and get off, you can't just get on the bike and press a throttle to like destroy the trail as you climb and go up. You're just gonna get a little more assistance. You're gonna ease the game, closen it to those pro level riders. To a regular guy though, it is hard to ride e-bikes with the regular bikes. You normally have to be e-bike and e-bike. These things will pull quite hard. In eco mode though, or trail mode, it is again based more on what you want, more on how you're pedaling and it will ramp up aggressively. So you are more likely to be able to ride with other guys. I've seen lots of videos where guys down in California are starting to ride these more and more younger and younger guys because they can ride from the house, get out through the hills to these fun jumps a lot faster. And that's what it's all about sometimes. Sometimes you wanna go out for the hard XC trail ride, get your full exercise in that full two hour period you got in. Other times you got about an hour and a half to get a ride in and you wanna to get to the fun bit. You don't wanna be like working hard, getting a super sweat. You wanna kinda of cheat, get to a fun bit, blast out, have fun and ride home fairly fast. And that's another benefit of e-bikes. So the Hecla starts at a pretty price of 10 plus thousand, depending where you're at, and goes up from there. Hopefully we get a demo bike in and we'll be able to take this onto the hills and actually try it out and see what it's like. If you'd like to see that, remember to subscribe below because it is actually happening. And if you have any questions about e-bikes, ask them below because I, I know a decent amount and I've rode a few of them and whether you need them or not, they are fun bikes. I don't think they do any damage to the environment. I know last time there was some heated conversations in the comments about that. They're doing pretty good. Very affordable to charge. They charge like a cell phone, so you can top them up whenever you want. 
with those big ranges, most people I see are doing two or three rides before they need to charge it. Or again, if you're about to go off a ride, plug it in. The 20 minutes while you get ready, you'll get a nice little boost to it. It's like three and a half, four hours from complete dead to full. So you're gonna get a good amount of charge in there, a good 10, 15% extra, which will make all the difference. And worst case scenario, it's still a bicycle. You can still ride all the way home. You're just a little bit heavier, still lighter weight than a department store full suspension. So remember that. All right, guys, Chris out. Good luck. See you out there.